Yo, what up, YouTube? It's your boy, Deuce Beast, and I'm back at it again with my boy, Marley Ma. What up, Mar? Deucey Deuce, what's good, bro? Hey. Shit, man. We back at it again. You know Yep, you know it's up, bro. Hey, I feel in the hat, bro. L.A., bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I got to rep hey, LeBron man, today, what... man. I got to rep LeBron. Le... <laughs> the Lakers, oh, you one of those. You one of those, bro. Oh. Hey, man. You know I kick it with a lot of Cali folks, but, man, right. this my boy. I met him in college, and then this nigga then moved all the way to the other side of the world, bro. I feel like this nigga on a on another platform, bro. So I'm gonna give it up. I'm gonna give it up for the homie Rashad. Rashad, what's good with it, bro? Hey. What's up? What's up? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. Shit, man. We chilling over here. You know what I'm saying? Little lake show, little cup. You feel me? <laughs> it is what it is. It, what's what's up, man? What you what you been holding down over there, man? I heard you you moved over there. Better life. What's going on, bro? Bro, man, I'm uh, you know, I'm out here in Florida now, uh, living the family life. Uh, not fully complete homesteader, but you know, I got some land. I just be chilling uh, with the family, dog. Stepping into this uh, sports world a little bit, starting to coach the youth, uh, and just uh, trying to find my way. That's right, bro. Finding your way. Hey, man, you know, for the people who don't know you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, You know, I could talk about our college days, this and that, but, you know, tell the world what you've been up to as far as, like, how you got to where you at right now, you know, starting off from, I already know, the JC days, the college days, the NFL days. Give us a brief background, bro. Yeah, man, so, you know, uh, those who don't know, you know, I play with Marlon, uh, in Nevada, I think that was 2010. Um, but yeah, I'm from Southern California, man. I moved around a lot. Family's military. Um, out of high school, you know, I was doing my thing. I signed with Oregon, messed up. I had to go to Juco. Uh, then Coach uh, Coach Stack found me. I, you know, I went out over to Nevada, and you know, it's history from there. Um, yeah, played in the league seven years. Was able, was, uh, you know, able to do my thing for a little while. Then I uh, decided to go home and, you know, be with my family and take care of my kids and whatnot. So here we are. Bro, you like downplayed that shit, bro. You went to the league. <laughs> niggas was like, niggas was like, like, no, no, nah, real shit, bro. I used to brag about this nigga because I used to clown my nigga across the room. You know, we was locker room buddies, but 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 you know what? This nigga used to bring the thunder. I used to be like, oh, okay, I fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? And then uh shit, bro. I remember Rashad got drafted, bro. And then like all of a sudden I see this nigga doing a little surf on the uh on <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. shit, bro! What was that about, bro? Bro, it was uh, I don't even know where that came from, dog. Uh, I kind of remember when I started doing it. I forgot, bro. I think I, I think I slipped in the end zone. I think I fell, and I'm like, damn, what's the dopest way to get back up? So, you know, I think it was against the Ravens. I did it for the first time against the Ravens, and uh, I'm, I was going backwards when I caught it. Super unathletic, but it looked, you know, as I fell to the touchdown, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to roll over and act like I'm surfing. And get up. I, I was like, I, you know, I just started riding with that. And then next thing you know, shit, I was scoring. I was going to do it as much as I could. So it was, it was a cool little movement at the time. Yeah, yeah. What was your what was your best memory, bro? Out of that whole time, you know, seven years is a long time, bro. I know I got some good memories with you. We gonna get into story time after this, dudes, because I got some stories to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Tell, tell me something, man. Man, my best memory. I don't know, man. I just, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I had a lot of good memories, bro. I mean, I, I, I was. I was doing some great things, man, and um, I don't know. I, I probably had a diving catch in Chicago that I can't forget, bro. It was, it was, uh, you know, we, we were we were down, I believe, and then we're going into halftime. We started to get a nice little drive going, and then uh, Coach Paul, you know, you know, a two minute drill at the end of, end of the half, you trying to put some points on the board. Coach calls a play, you know, 
I'm gassed. I just caught a ball. I caught an under route. And coach calls a play, you know, it's one of those plays where the coach calls and I know I'm, I'm like, man, I'm about to get this drop, you know. And I'm, I'm gassed, though, so I'm like, man, I know Marcus is, I have Marcus from every other time, like, I know Marcus is about to put this thing in the air. As long as I keep, you know, I keep my, you know, space, my spaces and whatnot, I know he's going to put it up there. And uh, so I just, you know, uh, get on my horse, bro, and I dug, and I ended up getting to that ball, and I dug, and it was just a nice little catch of the time and, and to, uh, you know, spark up the team before we went to halftime. I think that was probably one of the best catches I've had in my career. So just the way it all happened was uh, something that, you know, I'll never forget. Right, right. So, Rashard, let me ask you something. What was the transition like from college to the league? Was it a big difference when you got there? Yeah, man, and, and it, it, it is, it's crazy that, you know, <laughs> my, hey, man, it's just uh, – <laughs> Bro, I didn't know how to read defense mm-hmm. going to top, going to the league. Yeah. So at Nevada, it was straight like signals, like cap would just do signals and stuff, right? Right. Uh-huh. You know, and, and you have cap. So it's kind of like people ain't really playing true coverages. They kind of all worried about cap. And, and you know, we had a good run, we had a good running game. So, you know, uh I just had to kind of be one on one and kind of um do my thing. But so transitioning was kind of I wouldn't say it was rough, but I just had to learn on the go. And, I, you know, I've, I've always been not really afraid to to go out of my bubble and learn what I need to right. learn. So, I mean, there's even one time where uh, one of my one of my uh, my coaches, he told me to get up on the whiteboard. He said, hey, man, draw up the cover. Da, da, da. I drew I don't even know what I – I think it was like cover three or something, some easy shit. And, you know, and I drew up like squiggly lines and things like that. So after the meeting, he's like, yo, if you draw some shit like that again, like, they might cut them, you know. What I mean? and I'm like, I'm like, damn, for real, is that bad? He's like, bro. So he he showed me how to draw things up. So you know, I then I went and practiced, kind of you know how to write plays and things like that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it's funny because I was I was just going over to my son and his friend, but um, yeah. So transition was it was hard. It was just more something that I had to kind of like you know dig deep into, really trying to learn how to you know right play football if I wanted to stay here for a while. You know, it wasn't something that. I could just go and get away with. And I think some guys when they get the league, they think that they could just. Uh, I was an X receiver. I could only learn X receiver. I was a Z receiver. I could only learn Z receiver. It's like if you go in there, and you're not the guy. Even the the, the people who are the guys, like you got to learn everybody's spot. Right. You know? and right. Like, if you don't learn everybody's spot, then shit, you might only be there two years and be out the door. So that's crazy. Uh, luckily, that happened early in my career. And then, yeah, luckily that happened early in my career, and I just adjusted, and I started learning everybody's position and making sure when I did notes, I was just neat when I was doing it, and I, you know, I just really, you know, uh, went, you know, trying to, trying to transition and being a professional. Right. Man, so you know what's crazy about this, bro? I don't think Rashad remember this, bro, but I remember coming up to him, and um, I think this was his best game, his come out game, bro. Uh, we was playing Boise that year, bro. And I was like, fuck it, just give that shit to Rashad. Keep eating that nigga, bro. I was on defense, bro. He was, hey, bro, he was roasting, uh, what's his name, Johnson? I was like, bro, this nigga is eating him, bro. Hey, it's one-on-one. Let this nigga go, bro. And then he did that reverse, bro, and did the little spin move. I was like, oh, okay. This, this nigga did that, bro. This yeah. nigga did hey, that, that bro. crazy, bro. Hey, people, people don't realize, bro, Boise had a defense too, bro. All them, all, they all went to the league, bro. They had a oh, nice yeah. little defense. Boys had a nice that whole team was straight. Bro, that was the um, toughest team yeah, I that ever game faced. Was crazy. Yeah, that shit was crazy, yeah. bro. Hey dudes, it's time to get into story time. Are bro. you ready to get into story time? Story time, bro. Hey. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Go ahead, Marlon. So uh man, you know, back in the day, bro. Man, we had some funny ass times, bro. But man, we're shot, bro. This thing was my locker roommate. Like uh-huh. we was on one side, everybody else was on the other side, bro. So look. <laughs> Rashad gonna probably remember this, bro. This nigga Rashad walked in the locker room one day, bro. I'm like, what the? This nigga got on some yellow high top Air Force Ones. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hey. 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 
mind you, bro. I, when I went to Nevada, bro, I didn't really know nothing about twos and shit like that. I, like, I, didn't really, I wasn't really into like knowing what, what James was out there, what what uh, what shoes was out there like that. Like, I was just, oh, I'm just putting on. I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, this shit's fine. Like, I'm straight, you know. Bro, that like, shit ain't no. You, no, no excuse, bro. No, no excuse. Let's you know, like, hey, that talk. That's not the look, bro. Like, we always, hey, we always hey, man. Food, we, I used to get on this thing, bro. But you know what's crazy, bro? I could even say that much because my rotation was mediocre at the time. Yeah. I wasn't there yet. But yeah, that shit, bro. We used to have these comedy <laughs> sessions, bro. And then, uh, shit, man. Uh, it actually started off because you know what's funny? Rashad was like the only receiver on the fucking offensive side that wasn't afraid to hit. So right. I popped this nigga one time in practice, bro. Are you doing- this nigga caught me slipping, bro, and was talking <laughs> shit, bro. I was hot, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, only <laughs> it's only two dudes who ever caught me slipping, like, literally, who uh. caught me slipping, bro. It was this potato head ass nigga and fucking Malcolm Shepard. Uh, that nigga, I, I blasted you. both of these oh, niggas, shit. bro. I blasted both Malcolm, of these niggas, bro. And then, you know, we used to do this little re uh, option shit where, like, I'm at the safety spot, but I had to come downhill. So, you know, like, as soon as the fucking play action happened, nigga, that nigga linebacker, it was always B Marsh. He'll, he'll, Balls to the wall, nigga used to go straight to the fucking run. Yeah. Nigga, this nigga came out of nowhere. <laughs> nigga <laughs> tilted a nigga right there, bro. It was crazy, <laughs> That's bro. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know yeah. what, man? That I shit was. That yeah, he was. All, he, you know what's crazy? He yeah, was the I only was, one. Uh, I, I, I... <laughs> shit, bro. But yeah, we had well, some hell. I mean, B Win was B Win was that he was he was, he was that guy too and when it came to contact like oh yeah he definitely gonna lower that total so. We, we gotta get Wim on here. That's the next person I'm gonna get on him. Okay. You know, shout out B Wim. Cause you know, when these two niggas yeah. was together, we was really the offense with Vi, Rashad, yeah. Wim, Verge. I mean, shit, we had so many dudes. Shit, C B, you know, that's my nigga. J Man, he's still doing it in the league. I mean, everybody on a I mean, both sides of the ball, bro. Yeah. Shout out to the defense for for one thing, because we always shut y'all niggas down every scrimmage, you know what I'm I'm saying we used to have coach uh, pulling a little bit of hairs out. Relax, relax. <laughs> relax. We used I to think, cut I that think, shit I think, out. I think he simply had I scored on the first play almost. I think you, I scored on the first you, play. Like you was had. bro. I, I walked you down the sideline, bro. I walked you down the sideline and did no what? bro. You crazy, bro. Hey, bro, I was, bro, stop. <laughs> hey, pull that footage up. Pull that oh, footage up. oh, you know, I got footage, <laughs> photos, everything. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that shit was crazy, Y'all man. Was straight, bro. I, I will say, no, bro. I will say, bro. I don't think. I mean, it's, it's nothing against you know. It's nothing against uh, players after us or whatever. I don't think Nevada will have another team like that, bro. We had, we had them like that's a that's Hell a hard nah. team to, to you know, to beat, bro. We shouldn't even we should even lost that game in Hawaii that year. Like that fumble. Beat it, yeah, with a uh, cap fumble, but it's like, man, we should have. I don't think there'll, there'll be another team in Nevada history like that. Nothing against yeah. them, bro. I don't, we just had too many pieces, dog. It was yeah. Bro, it was so crazy because if you look at like our, our backups, bro, it was some dudes that was backups, bro. One of the cats that I always talk about that nobody knows much about was Mike Ball, bro. Oh, this dude. nigga was fucking stupid, bro. He was like, oh my God, bro. And, and I couldn't even my, think of a running back in the nation who was better than Mike Ball, bro. That was my biggest fear was Mike, actually Mike, seeing that nigga one-on-one. Like, like one-on-one? Yeah. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Mike Ball? Yeah. Shit. Bro, that he can truck you, juke you, bro, running run past you. That's, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> We have, yeah, I mean, shoot, uh, I mean, if I can remember, because that's, you know, but like Mike Ball, uh, was it Lanford, Mark, Mark Lanford or something like that? 4-3. Uh, uh, even Nick Hale, White Boy, Nick yep. Hale out there, trucking cat. Uh, you have Vi, obviously. 
You know what I'm saying? Like Mike, like, bro, we had a nice little, we had a nice little running back rotation. Bro, running back and and that was just on the offensive side, bro. I could tell you some niggas on defense. Whoopty, we had Dre. Remember Dre? Whoop, Whoopty, he was. Dre, yeah, uh, he the nigga who got you the uh the punt return touchdown. You know what I'm saying? When you took it to the house against uh, yeah. Boston College, he was out there. You know, Whoopty, yeah, we had yeah. BZ, KB Dre, went to the God, league. We came, we came over there together. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we had right. we had Dre Ballard, bro. We came in, we came in the uh, people transfer together. We bro. had Dre, <sighs> even the special teams group, bro. Fucking everybody, mm-hmm. fucking. Remember uh, the two like with Bubba, fucking Dean Fabulous, like Dean. I love, oh man, nice, bro. you know, shade off everybody, bro. Bro, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't, I don't think when I look at like just like football teams and I, I you know people think I'd be bullshitting because you know they like oh Nevada ain't you know pack five or what is it the the power five is what I'm trying to say right I keep telling people in 2010 if you would have put us against any of these power five schools that y'all thought was good bro I guarantee you y'all would have been like damn what the fuck just happened bro yeah. like like literally, it was crazy, bro. Yeah. Like, um, I'll give you a prime example, mm-hmm. bro. We and was bro, playing and against and bro, and bro, not not to cut you off, but bro, I just got it. I only was I was only there for a year. You know what I'm saying? With y'all, like imagine if I bro, if I was there with y'all the whole time, oh my gosh, it would have been yeah. I just was building chemistry with Cat, bro. Like I didn't even we weren't even like like that, like that. It was just so imagine, bro. Oh my gosh, we definitely would have. We definitely would have did something like crazy because oh, yeah. that shit was just getting started, and that group out of that group was out the door. Yeah, no, you know what's crazy? Because what I was going to talk about was remember when we played Boston College in San Francisco at the uh yeah. Craft Fight Hunger Bowl, bro. Boston College had hitters, bro. I'm talking about they had some hitters, hitters, right? Luke Keekly. Fuck that nigga. He took the he took defense and MVP from me because I dropped the pick, bro. Oh, Fuck that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I was balling that game. I had like seven hey, bro, tackles. Hey, hey, a hey, fumble I will say, <laughs> hey, bro, I will say Luke Keekley, he hit me. He probably he probably is the reason why my back's messed up. He hit me while I was with the Dolphins. I had a I had a slant route back of the end zone. And he hit me as I caught it. And that's a touchdown, bro. Like, I squeezed on the ball, but he hit me so hard that my bo- my body like bounced off the ground. And Damn! I kind of popped up and tried to play it off and walk to the sideline. Bro, my back still. I probably still. I mean, that's probably why my back is be messed up all the time. Now. That's crazy. That boy hit me. He hit me nice. You, he wasn't hit me. He just hit me as I was catching it. But he like it was one of the where he like threw me to the ground as I caught it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, my back was done for the rest of the year after that. Yeah, man, that's a hey, good. That's some good times, bro. We got a squad, man. Hey, Rashad, bro. Let's talk about your fucking pets, man. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh man. Oh I'm shit. Like, oh, hey, wow. bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh you, my you, god. Got, right? What that's the exotic, fuck right? is Hold that? <laughs> this, this is a. Uh... This is a butter. It's a ball python. It's a small, he's small right now. Nigga, that nigga you know, is it's crazy white. They say when they ball up like that, 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 that's why they get, that's why they're called a ball python because when they get all scared, they call up in a ball. Bro, that yeah, shit that. should be called vanilla, not butter, bro. That shit is white, bro. <laughs> with a black, with a black yeah. head, bro. What the hell you doing with a fucking snake, yeah. man? Huh? Like Rashad, bro. You losing uh, your blackness, uh, bro. Uh, you you been in Florida too long, bro. Do I gotta move you back out this way, bro? <laughs> you starting to act different, hey, bro. Hey, bro. You know me. I was, I was always not afraid to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Step out the box a little bit, you know. That shit so different, bro. You say you got what? How many bro. dogs you got? How many dogs you got? Bro, I'm on like a little mini farm now. I got I got 16 dogs. I got eight dogs, and then my other puppy just had a baby, so I got 16 dogs. I got two snakes. Damn. I got two snakes right here. I got I got three donkeys. I got three donkeys. I got donkeys. four cows, I think. You got jackasses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, shit. What else got, you got, bro? I got bro? three jackasses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think, wait, yeah, three or four. I got some cows. 
Oh, man. When you get into this world, you learn, like, the correct name for them, like, sir, bull, all that crap and yeah. stuff like that. I got, yeah. I, I had two horses. I got, I, I got rid of one. I got one horse. And then, um, I got, I think some more baby cows. And then, I really, I got a bunny over here. I got two birds over here. Like, uh, African gray. And then, I don't know what this other one is. And then, I got, like, three tortoises. Uh, Three turtles. Yeah, just... This nigga got turtles. God damn, <laughs> yeah, bro. bro! Like, what are you doing, bro? You trying to build a farm in old McDonald ass? Man. Like, what the hell is it? What, what's up, bro? Hey. You trying to feed the family? Just you know, just doing something different, bro. You, you know, I homeschool. I, I homeschool, so I'm at the house with the kids all the time. So you, you know, homeschool like to learn and do different things that I didn't do. Really Oh said, man, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I should have been homeschooled with that LA education I got. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. It's crazy, man, because you know, I oh, wish more shit. people were like in tune to the homeschool world, man. Yeah. Well, tell us more about you know, it, bro. I don't really, yeah, I don't really vibe. Yeah, bro, I don't really vibe with the system and whatnot. You know, I'm all about like taking advantage of the system instead of like being a part of it, you know, it's meant for us to take advantage, but I feel like we so stuck on trying to have our kids learn this white people stuff, education, the shit that they just want to teach us that we don't realize you actually allowed to take your kids out of school, not go well, out of the, the traditional school and teach them what you want to teach them. Like, yeah, you can follow still the, that, that guideline, but to, to a minimum, you know, like I don't sit there and judge my kid off of, you know, how, if he knows the president or if he knows fucking who did this or who did this? The, the white, the first white person did this, the first white person did that. So, you know, uh, my wife is Cuban and stuff, so we try to do a good job at just kind of, you know, staying on top of them with, with things that actually matter in, in, in life and whatnot. So uh, that's that's what I've been on, bro. Just trying to kind of unlearn, relearn. Like, unlearn everything that was taught to me and relearn all the shit that, that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, smart. man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy because that's real talk right there, man. Shout out to you, bro. And then hopefully Ooh. those kids get that, you know what I'm saying, that that higher power learning and utilize it for whatever they do, right. you know. And, uh, and I, you know, one thing about me, too, you know, I, I put my kids in um, private school. Right. Uh, not essentially because of, you know, it, it's it's more so because I experienced a different uh, uh, college experience. Like my first two years in college was horrible. I ain't going to tell you all what I did. But, man, I was I was like damn near academic and eligible for like the first two years straight because like I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And like like they didn't teach me the shit that I needed to learn. So I was like, all right. If anything, I'm going to make sure my kids get the right education. Right. And then on top of that, you know, it's going to open up doors for them. Even if they don't do the sports route, they can do something else different. So, right. I, hey, bro, I commend you on that because that's a big thing right there. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about, it's all about you know, what's being taught at home, bro. Like, you know, us parents got to be more involved, more to, to molding our kids, man. We, we trust in these. There's nothing wrong with the teachers, but I mean, let's keep it real, brother. They're showing you what's important. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't pay the teachers what they need to pay them. So they telling you in our face, like, you know what I'm saying? Especially like certain things happen, COVID happened, everything happened. They let these kids graduate in cars and do certain things. And it's like, y'all talking about how important these things in the program and that's from a, a young age to walk during graduation, walk during all these things. And it's like, they're just giving us that shit right in our face and we just are being programmed to be ignorant to it. So, right. you know, and, and especially as black Americans, it's like, you know, and uh, I think that kind of started with our, our parents, things like that, which yeah. that's a longer, you know, that's a deeper conversation. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just in tune all that shit now, bro. Like, I ain't about to waste time. What I'm going to do is we're going to take advantage of these sports. We're going to use these sports to get us to where we need to get, it, get you to. And if you hit 18, you ain't got no scholarship, we got to figure it out. Some type of trade school. Or along the way, we're going to learn some shit that's going to help you go make money right away instead of, you know, go get that. You feel me? Right. So, yeah, no, nah, real talk. That trade school route ain't bad because uh -huh. one of the things that these dudes are doing, man, they going to college, man. And I, I, I mean, me in my profession, you know, I work with different folks. And unfortunately, I don't have no black people in my office. But I'm the only black person. But, you know, it's crazy because like 
people think because they go to college, they get their masters, they get this, they get that, they gonna get a job, man. That shit does not happen, bro. Nah, that's Your real. ass will be <laughs> with a bachelor's degree working at Walmart. So don't take it personal, <laughs> but it, it is bro, what it is, it bro. Real. It is what it is, bro. For real. Hey, hey, like, obviously in certain areas, and you know. Certain areas, then you got to do what you got to do because if you want to be like a doctor or some certain things, you got to cover the cover the areas you need to cover. But you know, I think I think people who are, are graduating kids need to be more in tune to what they want to actually become because right. just taking that college route, sometimes everybody ain't ready for college yet. You know, and you don't have to yeah. go right away too. So I think that's that's the uh, that's what's been programmed as well. Like right when we graduate high school, you got to go straight to college right away. Or else, you know, right. you really yeah, yeah. in life. And it's like, nah, man, you know, you can't actually go explore what you want to do before you start that college clock because that college is a different life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it, it sure is Ever, on and off the field. Hey, Rashad. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you got recruited by Nevada, was it a culture shock when you got out here? Ah, uh, uh, man. Nah, bro. Honestly, bro. And my, and my, you know, when I got to Nevada, bro, I had messed up so many opportunities in my life at that point. Yeah. I didn't even go out, bro. Even the boys he gave me said, I, I did my thing, whatever, whatever. I went straight to the crib. Bro. I was on such a mission to make it to the league. That, yeah, like, yeah. Mind you, bro, I was already, like, you know, the guy coming out of high school, certain things. I was, you know, the best thing out of my high school since forever, you know. And, like, I was supposed to go to Oregon and do certain things. So, I messed up. I was hanging out with the wrong people. I was doing the wrong things. And... And you know, uh, so when I got to Nevada, bro, I was like, "This is my last shot. Like, if I don't, if I don't lock in, I ain't." They say, and, I, and I, you know, I had a lot of people tell me in my life, "You can't do this, you can't do that." So I was just on a mission to prove them wrong, but also prove myself, you know, where, you know, that I belonged, you know, and things like that. So I wasn't worried. I, I, I was good to go, and I'm a military head, so it's yeah. kind of like you know, I'm a military brat, so I was programmed to. Wherever I land, I can make work. So Nevada was straight. I, I liked it, man. It was good. I never really been around snow like that. It was cool. <laughs> uh, it was a good little experience. I never got to stay in the dorms and things like that. So yeah. my first semester, even though I was a junior, I, I still got to stay in the dorms and whatnot and experience that that whole like kind of environment. So, but bro, I was locked in on trying to get to that league. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Like, yeah. I, I, if I can go back, I would appreciate the process more, man, because I didn't appreciate it. Like, I I was just. I was—I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time. That I was just so locked in, like I gotta get there. I gotta get there because yeah. I, I messed up. I don't want to be just that guy that's like, right. we all, you know, the the the, the, the has been like, damn, he was so good, and then what happened to him type shit, yeah. you know? So, um, but Nevada was a good experience, man. I wouldn't—I wouldn't change it for anything. That was a, a great group of uh, guys I met. I yeah. think you know, like, like Marlon said, bro, if we would have played, if we would have, if we would have played that that. Like that next year, our senior, we had an Oregon game. Yeah. Where we got like smashed. So, but if we would have had that, 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 uh, dream team that next year playing Oregon, yeah. That probably would have put everybody on the map even more because we would have, we would have performed better and things like that. But we had, you know, like a young QB and we had a lot of other things going on. But, uh, Nevada was straight, man. I like Reno. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, this, this is for both of y'all. How intense were practices? At, at, at UNR. Oh, man. I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> they were straight, bro. Uh, they they were straight, dog. I mean, you know, uh, it was something. Like I said, bro, I was there to set the tone, bro. Yeah, I receiver. I was there to fucking. I was there to set the tone, bro. I was, you know, I, I saw the talent. And I was just like, man, I'm coming here to do do what I do. Like I'm just trying to. Be a guy, man, and, and Marlon could probably, you know, Marlon, you know, knows how I was. I just went hard all the time. Then practices before the practices, we had to do one hundred sixties. I'm, I'm not worried about nobody. I'm shit. I'm, I'm down and back. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm trying to get my reps in because you know I'm trying to stay on the field and, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm punt returning and things like that. So you gotta have a, a receiver yard. You gotta have a motor and right. things like that. But I wouldn't say the practices were intense. I, I would just say me getting used to like. The coaching was 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 a little different for me because you know, I coach all and things like that, uh, and then getting used to like a running kind of system. And but I don't think it was that that intense. Oh, okay. You know what's crazy, bro? Yeah. About uh, like one of the things that I could say about us, bro, is that we had 
Like, it was a, a respect thing about us, bro. Like, I couldn't waste a rep with a second string guy. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like I was going to get on the field with right. him anyway. So, like, you know, we used to do one-on-ones and shit like that, bro. If I couldn't go against Wim or Rashad or so – I'm not going to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and shit, bro. One of the hardest things I had to do was guard uh Suddy. S- Zach Sudfield was fucking oh. huge. <laughs> bro, bro. Hey, that bro, he was the hardest dude I ever guarded. Oh, for real? Ever. Bro, what? He could go up top on anybody, bro. He was white, 6'7, six, 6'6, six, six, and bro had bounce. Right. He had bounce. <laughs> A normal person looking at attack of like, he ain't about to. But then Zach get out there and start like, oh shit, you know I mean? bro, he was guy. that guy. He was yeah. that guy. Exactly. But yeah, bro, we had we had. I'm telling you, bro, we had some real hitters, bro. Some real. Hey, it was it was dudes out there, man, that literally came to bring it, bro. So like, it was like. If you was playing, bro, trust me, you was the best of the best, bro. Yeah. Like, let me just be honest with you, bro. And one thing about Coach Alt, that nigga make you earn everything. He don't put you on the field as a starter. Like, you got to earn that starting role. Because yeah, every yeah. time you came in a program, it's like seniors up here, and then everybody else got to fight for a spot. And that's one thing about Rashad. You know, he came in, took spots. It was spots that was there before him. <laughs> and, like, he okay, came yeah. and took it. So, I got to I gotta give him his prize because yeah. – the same year he started, I started, and, you know, it started off in spring ball. We both locked down our spots in spring ball, and it was like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, unfortunately, I was doing some knucklehead shit, so, you know, yeah. things got out of hand. They tried <laughs> to do some political stuff against me and say I wasn't a starter, but I started my whole my whole tenure, basically, bro. If it yeah. wasn't for injuries and suspensions, because I got suspended twice, I started every game, bro. Like, that's crazy. So, yeah. like... The thing about like how we had the squad that we had, I just look at these younger athletes and I don't know if they really, really got that drive to like, you know, be a killer, bro. Like it, it's a different mentality. I, yeah. I call it the Kobe mentality, but like when I was around dudes like Rashad, Isaiah, uh, BZ, D Moke, all of these dudes that like JMJ, B Marsh. All of these dudes uh-huh. wanted to be on the – they was the best, bro. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You know, Wim, I can hear Wim right now to this day. Hey, cuz, throw me the rock, cuz. I'm taking – he's sorry, cuz. I'm taking him up top right now. I'm like <laughs> – Bro, we got – I mean, even – I mean, remember, uh, remember Shane? Shane was a nice little, you know? Oh, we Shane had, had was nice... – Bro, Shane was that guy, bro. Yeah, if he didn't Coming hurt his shoulder, I think he would have probably did more, but he, he ended up hurting his shoulder, and I think that messed him up. Bro, Shane came killing it, bro. Shane was benching like 360, bro, yeah. at receiver. Yeah. At receiver, bro. Shane was – bro, we had a squad, bro. But you know, what's crazy? you know what's crazy, though, too, bro, about that squad? And I think I talked to Nevada one time when I was with the Titans and, and they were playing um, – what's that college up there? They were playing um, – What's that called in Nashville? Vanderbilt. So um, oh. I went up there. I forgot who was the head coach, but I went up there to talk. But the thing is, with, with our group, bro, I didn't need to tell Marlon I, nothing, like motivation. I didn't need to right. know if Marlon was ready to motivate. I didn't need to go look at JMJ or B Marsh or whoever. I didn't need to look at nobody and buy. And, you know, I used to walk around with his gloves and shit like that all the time and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm, you yeah, know, that I'm little thing. Really, you know, I'm not really that raw guy in the first one, but. Our team wasn't like we didn't need each other. Not saying we didn't need each other, but like we was already ready to go in our own way. Yeah. So where it was like, yo, I don't need you to help me motivate. Like I'm going to set the tone regardless. We're a whole bunch of like tone setters. Like if you ain't setting it, I'm setting it. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And it was just like mm-hmm. that's just something that I feel like like to 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 you know to, to your point, Marlon, about like today. It's like I don't think there's enough tone setters out there that that really want to take control of, of being the guy or, or trying to be the guy or competing to be the guy. Because when you get a, a whole group like that, it's unbreakable. And like, that's what we had. We had a lot of guys that were really trying to perfect their craft and really trying to go out there and, and, and shit, make it to the league or whatever, you know, but really when we're trying to go out there and, uh, you know, be, be dominant. And, and, and by doing that, like I said, I think, I don't think there'll be another a team like us in, in the history of Nevada. Nah, true. It Bobby, won't be true. Right? Like, I always True. say, like, those years right there, y'all had Nevada turned up so much. Like, it was crazy. 
that 2000, what was it, like 2009, 2010, 2011, y'all, y'all had the city cracking. I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, I was back then, you know, not now, but back then I was out all the time. So I seen the effect yeah. of what y'all was doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing I want to ask you, because you, you in the coaching and we talking about mentality and things yeah. like that, man. I know as a kid, when I was growing up, right? My thing was I had to do track. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I started off with baseball. Baseball was my first sport. Um, it was slow for me. I wish I would have gave it a little bit more, you know, timing. But I did baseball. I did basketball. I did football. And I ran track. You know, right now I see kids, they only play basketball. They only play football. The mentality's not there. As a coach, how do you prepare your kids or how do you look at it as a parent? You know what I'm saying? With this new uh, way of coaching and training. Cause I feel like nowadays kids are only training for one sport and their mentality is, Oh, I got to do this to go viral. So you give me some info about that, bro. Yeah, man. I, I think uh, we're, we're in this, the space of like playing one sport year. Right? And they think, like, if I just lock in and play football, I'm going to make it to the league. If I lock in and play basketball, I'm going to make it. But the, I don't know. I, just, I, I don't know. I don't agree with it. I think that every kid should play every sport. I think that these coaches are also building coaches where they're disciplining kids or, or, or a kid's losing playing time or this, that, and third because he chose to go play baseball during football season or he chose to go play run track during seven-on-seven seven football season. You know what I'm saying? So it's like – I don't know. I don't agree with that. I think yeah. that the more sports, the better. I think uh, each each sport teaches you different things. You know, uh, baseball is one of the hardest sports mentally. Oh, and yeah. I feel like that, that may, if you can get through baseball, certain things, it makes you mentally tough. I feel like football just gets you all around conditioning and toughness. And then there's other sports that you can play basketball, certain things, agility, certain, you know. Um, but I, I definitely uh, believe in kids playing multiple sports. I think that the fact that even there's coaches out there that are making these kids play year round or even setting up the schedule to do year round sports. Uh, one sport is just crazy. And it's usually the coach that, you know, didn't really do nothing with the sport. So he's over here, you know what I'm saying? Because all the coaches I come across actually are experienced and did things at, at a high level. They want their kids to play multiple sports and they don't, you know, I, I got some coaches that are like, you know, even my staff last year, I coached, and, and some kids would miss for baseball. And he's like, oh, man, you, you can't just start it right away. I'm like, bro, if you miss to be at another, like, sporting event, cool. If you miss it just to miss, that's different. That don't, you know, now that don't sit right, you can't just be missing consecutive practices and then just because you miss it. But if you miss it because, all right, hey, he over there at baseball or he over there at basketball, that's cool. Communicate with the coach, and that's it. As long as you get communication, I'm cool with that. But some of these guys really be – trying to discipline these kids over, you know, like going out there and, and doing their thing in other, other areas. So uh, I'm all for all sports, but I play the, the more sports the better. Because once you turn 18, unless you're good enough to play both sports at the next level of college, you're done, you know? Right. So you might as well yeah. experience all the damn sports you can yeah. while you can, you know? That's real. That's real. So I got a question. How influence, How influential were your parents and you playing football? Um, or was this just something that you wanted to do? That's uh, uh, my so my dad, my dad raised me to play football. And he trained me to play, and then him and my mom split, and um, yeah, we were just went out there, you know. So some things happened, and, yeah. and you know, my dad was there and things like that, but uh. They were they were a good part of motivation for me. Yeah. Um, I was kind of on my own since I was like 16, 17. Okay. So they were a good part of motivation. Like, you know, one side was like, oh, you can't make it because of this. And I was trying to like prove, you know, my dad's side that I could make it. And that yeah. mom was just going through her own battles and shit like that. So, uh, you know, uh, me getting into the league was, 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 was good on us. Like, yeah. bringing our relationship back together like that but it was just motivation man and and that's good i always had just that that knack i don't know i just always every time i was around the kids i said they were the best you know i just from being little up i just yeah. like man that's that's the best damn like i'm out here chilling i'm not even going yeah. hard yet and that's you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's, it's uh so but i will say my dad kind of trained me to do that and then from that from a little kid i always wanted to play football so uh but i was always like 
you know how we came up, everybody's outside playing. He was outside right. playing over here, outside playing, whatever, you know. So uh, I always, you know, was just, uh, you know, I had a passion to play football and, and, and prove people wrong. So yeah. I had a lot of people tell me, like, things weren't going to make work. So I just had to go prove them wrong. And, right. And, and I mean, I... I ask you that, you know, because I think nowadays a lot of these parents and coaches do live vicariously through their kids because they didn't make it to the highest level. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's why I wanted to get your insight on that. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a good thing to live through them, but you got to do it the right way. So right. if you're going to post your kid and work out and do all this crap, you got to do it the right way and you got to be smart. And um and actually learn what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and take the advice that people are giving you. You can't just um, post everything to your kid. And you got to be realistic. Man, if your kid ain't there yet, it's okay for him not to be there yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I would say, because, you know, I'm kind of addicted to social media. You know, I don't have to admit it. Like, I'm addicted to Instagram. I'll be on Instagram yeah. a lot, you know, just kind of searching for things. I was, I'm trying to kind of change my algorithm on the Instagram where I used to look at a whole bunch of bullshit. Now I'm looking at shit that's trying to help me, you know what I'm saying? Right. And better than somewhere, give me information about something. Um, but I will say like, you know, I don't think parents realize when their kid's not it. And then, and then yeah. uh, I say that to say this too. So when I first finished, I was always uh, posting my son working out. This, and I'm like, damn, this boy getting good. Da, da, da. But then you get into the comparison phase where it's like, okay, little Johnny over there, Damn, my son better than him. Like, we got to go, go, go. So if he ain't, if he, if he wake up and he have a bad day, it's like, boy, what you doing? Like, man, get your ass. Like, what the yeah. So then I had to kind of, I'm also not afraid to pivot and, and, and look at myself in the mirror and be like, bro, you wrong. Like, what you doing? You know? So yeah. I had to kind of realize, and, and, you know, my support system also helps with that. Like, man, like, you're over here trying to be, you're over here trying to get parents to Instagram kids where that shit don't matter right now except for yeah. you. And then you have exactly. to look like, you know, like, and you have to look like, and I look back and I'm like, this boy is better than me when I was eight. So what the what am I doing? You know what I mean? And it's a long road, man. It's like so you see these offer letters and certain things. And I think just parents aren't realizing that that shit doesn't matter right now. Right. And they don't want to. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to. Uh, Cause you know I tell these parents still uh, now like, hey, y'all gotta slow it down to this, and they still don't listen to me with, with my resume. They don't listen to me. Yeah. It's like, well, see, you just in your own head because it's like, yo, if, if I tell you to slow down or somebody's saying something, then and you don't listen, then yes, you're living through him, but my biggest thing is like, you just gotta learn how to live through it the right way. So yeah. uh, again, they have to realize it's a long, it's a long road. So like I said earlier, like people are getting offer letters and they're trying to get looked at by this person, that person. I could be coaching the bad of football and offer your kid right now at seven years old. I I might get fired when he's 10. So well, who yeah. cares, you know what I'm saying? I might not yeah. there. I, not even, I might not. I won't be there when he's 18. So that shit don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like no right. coaches last that long. I think Coach Alt might be the only one that's been in Nevada that long. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So oh shoot, man. You know, so it's like you know. So as far as parents when they're doing that, I think they just gotta they just gotta uh, come to a realization like it's it's their life, it's not yours, and you need to learn the, the life that you're trying to make them live if you're really ready for that. You know. All right. Yo, 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 man, I got to bring this up, dudes. You know what I'm saying? Rashad's out there coaching and shit, right? Uh-huh. Rashad, you know Cam Newton's a coach too, right? He got a uh-huh. 7v7, uh-huh. whatever, bro. <laughs> I just want to know, man, are the kids testing the water? <laughs> are, are, let me tell you this, man. One of the things he said is that he's accessible, right? And yeah. I said the same exact thing before he even came out and said that that's yeah. the case, bro. Like, how do you Too feel? Accessible. That's what I'm about to say. Like, how do you feel about that, bro? Like, what's going on out there, bro? I think he, I like what he's doing. I think he's too accessible. I think it's like, I'm not going to say, nah, bro, I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to be touching with this. And I'm not going to say this is what the case is. I don't know Cam. I never talked to him. He don't know me. I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes when you leave that spotlight, the depression makes you search for the spotlight more. You know what I'm saying? It's like you leave the fans hot, cheering and shit like that, and you feel like you less than when you don't have that. So I feel like 7 on 7 might be giving him that, that uh, might be helping him with that depression side, potentially. I don't know, Cam. You might be good in good spirits, but we all leave. We all get that form of depression. 
that. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the game is gone forever, so it's kind of like you have to real be talk. The cope that, with that, it. That's a you tough know? one right there, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's tough, and it's hard for you know people to admit and, and say certain things. But I feel like he's using that space to still get that that uh, um, I don't know that 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 cheering, I guess, from the fans and things like that. But I just feel like he could do it a little better, but who am I to him? You know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like you can't make yourself that accessible because I've been around everything and, and yeah. nobody, people don't even, obviously they don't know who I am, but it's like, so unless I'm like in, in Cali and like where I grew up kind of, but you know, here in Florida, but he's just too accessible, bro. He's, he's trying to, he's trying to be one of the kids and it's like, bro, do your shit, get in, get out, bro. Like, right. stop trying to hang out and, <laughs> and fucking do the dance with everybody and do certain things. It's like, it's cool, but then now you get put, you put yourself in a situation like this, which he handled it correctly because yeah. any, anybody I mean, would have probably, probably I mean, did fucking, he? Did he? he? he, he, he bro, I would have had to fade him, bro. I would have had to fade kids and parents, everybody in this motherfucker getting knocked bro, out, bro. bro but if you look at the video, dog, rewatch that video. I don't know if it's just me and where I go mentally, but he could have threw them niggas over the ledge. He could have. He could have. He, he had to do that. He could have just that. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> he did it, though. He just held him, which, which, which uh, kudos to him because, you know, dude sucker punched him and did all this shit. It's kind of yeah. like, but he, he just made himself look back. He got a clean shot on him, and that dude didn't even. Yeah, he wobbled a little bit, but he, he was yanking him by the damn. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I think I think you know to answer your question and, and stick on that is uh, I think he just got to be smarter with what he's doing. I think obviously you know he don't have to change it because that's him. But I think if I was him, I would just be like, man, damn, I, I'm gonna get in, get out. I ain't gonna be. This accessible. I'm gonna stay on the field, whatever, whatever. All right, y'all. See y'all tomorrow. See y'all next tournament. You know. Right. Man, this is crazy, bro. We had Rashad Matthews on another "It Doesn't Matter" podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this shit was cool, man. Hey, Rashad, man. One thing I got to say, man, is that uh, hopefully your kick game got better. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Hey, bro, I'm out there. Now. I'm out you there. Said, now. Hey, you hey, said, hey, I will say, when you realize where they come from and how much they cost, shit. Yeah. That's yeah. Money yeah. yeah. It is. It, no, real talk is wasted money, bro. Yeah. It's nothing Basic, about this. Bro. It's nothing about this that's glorified. But at the same time, we all got our little dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we spend money yeah. on shit that you know some people like to eat cheese pizza or something. I don't know. They fat and six hundred pounds. That's why they go to the, huh? the TV show. Or you know, some people got their car fetish. Whatever it is, bro. You gotta. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not yeah. gonna let you, bro. I'm not gonna let you slip, bro. Because you you didn't made enough money to rock some decent shit. <laughs> hey, I will say though, I did have a nice little car, a little closet, shoe closet. So yeah, I, I see. Say. So I, I did some motivation, bro. I did some yeah, motivation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I made sure in case I came across all of you. Hey, bro, these motherfuckers like retros, dog. <laughs> I, feel you, I feel you. Hey, man. Hey, Deuce, man. We did it again, man. It, it again, doesn't man. matter. It don't bro. matter, man. It don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Hey, keep going, man. This thing is this thing is popping, man. Get it going. Keep, man, keep it we going. Trying, I mean, yeah. Man. I got I, hey, love, man. I got one more for the kids who do want to make it to the league. Can you just give them a little bit of advice on what it takes mentally and physically to make it? Yeah, man. Uh lock in. Lock in. You know, I, I tell the kids all the time that I got now, like, especially after I get a while, I get around them for a while, like, stop, don't give me lip service. Like, action, action, action speaks louder than words, man. Like, because they, yes, coach, yes, coach, they're still messing up. And yeah. like, hey, go, go write your plays down, go do this. And they're like, yeah, I wrote it, I wrote them. And then it's like, you still messing up the route. So, so you definitely ain't going home and studying nothing. So stop giving me lip service and, and give me action. Action speaks louder than words. So if you want to do what you want, if you want to, uh, you can be anything you want, man. Just yeah. go out there, do the research for it, and actually put in the work for it. You ain't going to just right. get there by posting uh, videos on Instagram yeah, and, and right. doing this out there. You got to put the work in, man. These guys, I saw a clip the other day, like, you got to be borderline, like, insane. You got to be borderline, yeah. you know, because uh, you're going you gonna to lose friends along the way. You got to be able to go train when people are going out partying. You got to be able to... You got to be able to do the things that other people aren't doing. Yeah. Um, and, and you got to be able to... Uh, be committed to that. 
So uh, if you really want to do it, go out there and do it. Just like right. that. It's that easy. It's easier said than done, but it's literally that simple. Right, right. All right, Rashad, give them your Instagram and stuff so they can follow you. Yeah, man, follow me at uh, Rashad Matthews. Uh, I try to post and be be pretty creative on there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, y'all give me a follow. What about you, Marlon? Go ahead, man. Tell them what your Instagram is, Marlon. Man, you know I don't do the Instagram, bro. <laughs> I keep telling you about that, bro. But uh, it's Marlon.Johnson.8. Y'all know that's the... If y'all know me and I fuck with you, you know I'm for sure going to you know, accept it. We going to follow each other, whatever the case may be. But it doesn't matter, podcast. That's where y'all going to catch the content at. The family shit is on that other one. Yeah, so y'all yeah. be on that one. <laughs> Look... If you don't know Marlon, he ain't gonna accept your shit. So don't even That's say real it. talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this man, he a hey, family hey, man. Hey, I saw, I saw, hey, I saw Ziggy uh, give the top five the other day, bro. Hey, yeah. I just put it out there, bro. Yeah, I'm glad it's being recorded. Uh-huh. I was only at Nevada for two years now. Give me four years, I would have. probably blew them records to the roof. But I'm gonna say, <laughs> Nate, I'll give Nate his, his flowers. Nate yeah, so, but. I was only there for four years, dog, and I had two quarterbacks. So, hey, just hey. Give me for four years. Woo! I'm just saying. Hey, I just want to hey. say that. I just want to put that out there. I got something else to say. Yeah, this is a. I respect everybody on the list. Hey, hey, this is a a, a, a a upcoming episode. Marco, be ready. I'm going to rewind this oh, clip. Marco, I'm going yeah. to rewind this clip, Marco. So you hey. better come out here and speak that. T- hey, Marco, bro. I need hey, Marco, that. straight too, but Marco didn't have nothing on me, dog. He know what's up. <laughs> Marco didn't have nothing on me, dog. He know what's up. Hey, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro. If you, if, hey, if you, hey, if you, if you, if you, uh, like I said, I was only there for two years, bro. Yeah. yeah. Two years, bro. And I had a first year quarterback the next year with Cody uh Pizarro. You know what I'm saying? A little a sophomore, whatever. So I so I just wanted to put that out there. Marco Mitchell's my guy. He already knows what's up, but ah, mm-hmm. Marco, nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> hey. You know, you know it's coming, Rashad. You know it's coming. Hey, I'm and just saying, going... and the, hey, and the only person who put up numbers in the league was Nate. That's the only person ahead of me. Nate. Oh, Nate, Nate did. God, bro. They, they Nate, 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 bro. I ain't gonna let you get Nate shine, bro. Nate got it, bro. He got oh, it, bro. Nate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, love, bro. I love watching him on TV still, bro. Nate's the guy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, for sure, for sure. Hey, but- you go, Nate, and then. Rashard, but I'm number two. <laughs> 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 you best believe it. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, oh, bro, I just want to throw that out there. Shout out Ziggy, bro. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Nowadays, that shit don't matter because Ziggy didn't even get me. He, he didn't go to the combine or nothing. Dude got drafted uh, sixth round, I think. But that just shows you, like, it don't matter. Like, now, well, back then, but it don't matter, man. If you, if you put in the shit, bro, you're going to get to where you need to get to because... Right. Ziggy, Ziggy didn't even he he didn't even have a big ass uh, whole you know thing around him and things like that. But Ziggy was just that guy. But shout out to him. But yeah, so I just want to let him know, like you know, I'm you know you. Too. You hey, hey Rashad, you know you're coming back on here. You know you're coming back on here, bro. You hey, coming back on here. We're gonna have a whole squad on here. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. just everybody up here, just like the whole <laughs> nigga. You what? what? Hold on, bro. I I route your ass right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, let me be clear though. Let me be clear though. Let me be clear though. Since we record, it's just receiver. I'm saying receiver. Not all yeah. time. Yeah. Certain guys, mm-hmm. like y'all said, Dante. Dante was a fucking freak, so you can't compare. Oh, yeah. But different. she wasn't there. See, I had to go to a, a part where, like, real talk, you was there 2009, 2010, right? Or 2010, 2011. Yeah. Bro, it was some dudes, and we had the coaching at that time, bro. I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. You don't know about Johnny Johnny Ball game. That to me, out of all the DBs I've ever played, you know with, Jonathan Amaya? Yeah. yeah, he was he was the coldest. Josh Maga, you never had to feel that nigga. Josh Maga, bro. Nah, Josh yeah. Josh Maga was a fucking monster, dog. That nigga was like like six two f- nigga two forty two fifty running a four five forty, bro. That yeah. nigga was crazy. 
at middle linebacker too. He was yeah. just everywhere. <laughs> so like it was a lot of and you know D Moke was fucking crazy, bro. Nigga, D Moke yeah. was nigga. I, I nigga, I was glad I was on defense with that nigga. So I ain't gonna even <laughs> lie to you. <laughs> he was wild, bro. Yeah, was wild. So yeah, man. But Deuce, man, go ahead, man. Give him yeah, your shit, fault, bro. Now, hold on, look. <laughs> you know what we should do though. For the last episode of the season, we gotta have all y'all on here. That would be crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it'll be too many. That segment will be so long, though, bro. We wouldn't even have enough time, bro. It would be like hey, we gonna make a thirty-minute segment for each hey, player, bro. That's gonna be crazy, bro. It's gonna be a three-hour. It's gonna be a three-hour show. Y'all going back and forth. Yeah, I'm just in oh, here, just man. chilling, just listening. You know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, right, you go right. ahead and end the show today, man. Hey man, say what you gotta y'all say. know what it is, bro. It it doesn't matter. Shout out Deuce, shout out Rashad, and we out, bro. And we out, Deuces.